This modern-looking entertainment center was created by converting a 15-year-old bookshelf into what it is today. At 153 inches wide and 8 feet tall, the unit is extremely large and heavy as it's made with a veneer-coated MDF. I was asked to dispose of it when I realized it was very similar to sketches I had made of an entertainment center I wanted to build. Uncertain about how to get it apart, I realized it was made of a base, cabinet towers, a counter, shelf towers, a top, and then three panels on the back. The towers are seated top and bottom in a key made of plywood that is screwed to the surface. Each tower is made of a three quarter inch plywood frame which holds the weight. The sides are made of half inch veneer and then the front is made of a half round piece of wood. Even at 46 inches wide, the shelf opening was not large enough for a modern TV. The solution was to take the two center towers and move them outward to create a larger center space. In this space, we wanted to create a faux wall and have a TV free floating in the center. Accomplishing this required several significant structural modifications. To reuse the three 4x8 panels on the back that basically gave it its structural integrity, 2x4s were placed from the counter into the top to cover the seams between the panels. To support the telescoping TV bracket, two 6-inch wide beams were made with two strips of 3 quarter inch plywood glued and bonded together. These pieces of wood were put in to cover the distance of 16 to 24 inches for whichever TV bracket was purchased. Since the base already existed and it had a three quarter inch piece of plywood underneath, a slot was cut and the beam was offset so that the three one three quarter inch piece of plywood fit into the slot and could be bolted to the bottom support. Concerned about the redistribution of weight, additional support was added to the base of the unit and additional feet to support the new tower location. Since the two by fours and six inch beams formed two pockets, vents were cut into the surface of the counter. These vents are directly over the AV compartment. The idea was to add vents inside the compartment so air could be drawn up from the floor, go up behind the full wall, and exit at the ceiling. The last modification to the countertop was to cut in a wire access hole between the two beams so that anything coming out of the TV bracket could reach the AV compartment. Two three-quarter inch pieces of plywood were glued and bonded under the counter in front of each beam to allow the bolts to be screwed into them. The 153 inch long base, counter, and top were made up of three pieces each. These pieces were connected with corrugated nails. Since I'd moved the beams, the top no longer had support in the center. To compensate, I constructed a new beam for the top that went along the back. This would provide support all across the length of the top and also give me a location to mount the unit to the wall and provide support for the center beams that would hold the TV. To construct the faux wall with engineered flooring and control the weight, quarter inch underlayment was used to, to screw across all the beams. The size of the faux wall was determined by doing some mock-ups. Originally it was going to extend just beyond the 2x4s, but it really wasn't wide enough, so it was extended approximately 4 more inches in each direction. To reduce the chances of damaging the finish on the faux wall, the TV bracket was mounted on the underlayment before the faux wall was applied. This allowed all the holes to be created prior to putting the floor on. You can see here I have a hole, third hole in the top center that I was planning on putting above the bracket. When I determined afterward it was uh, one unnecessary and quite ugly, I went back and filled it in. The engineered flooring for this project required two boxes and there were going to be approximately three pieces left. So all the pieces were pre-cut to the width of about 65 inches and laid out on the floor so that when we put it on it fit properly. After looking at several online recommendations of how to mount the wall, I decided on a flexible adhesive caulk and nailing. All of the beams were marked on the underlayment and then all of the flooring applied from the bottom to top. After it had dried, I went ahead and cut the holes out in the back that I'd previously cut, uh, which were all aligned with the TV bracket. To locate placement on the TV bracket, I simply drilled through the holes that I created in the test mount. In the final solution, I used two lag bolts, top and bottom on each side, and then put in two T-nuts to ensure it would never detach from the beam. I thought it might be cool in some future date to install some hanging pictures or something along the full wall. To accommodate that, I put in screws every six inches on the two by four down the side and created some brackets from some old window lifts with keyholes that fit over the screws. With the towers being closer together, the shelves are now much smaller and less likely to warp. The original shelves had a tendency to slide on the pins, so I inset uh, the wood so that they would sit down on the pins, preventing the wood from sliding. This is important because I selected LED lights for the front. To put the LED lights on, I decided on 45 degree aluminum without the diffuser. The diffuser actually brings the light down below the aluminum, making it more visible from the front when you're looking at it. 
Normally this type of LED lighting track is mounted with brackets or double-sided tape, but I wanted to minimize the ability to see how the brackets were mounted and create a nice clean finish. To do this, I decided on drilling holes into the aluminum bracket and screwing it in. Fortunately, this particular aluminum came with some really tiny screws. A jig had to be created because there was so little distance between the drill head and the aluminum. If you went too far, it actually marred the front and was visible. In the end, it worked out great. An extra hole was drilled in the aluminum so that the wire off the end of the LED could be attached with hot glue. The back panels are about three quarters from the edge and the towers are hollow. So we simply drilled a hole into the tower and we drilled a hole within the 45 degree area of the light. JST connectors were soldered onto the end of the cable and onto the end of the lights. The cable was run through the tower and attached to the terminal block on the back. Several terminal blocks were attached to the back of the tower to accommodate the lights coming from each shelf level. I also wanted to put a speaker on the shelf and to conceal that wire I decided on drilling the hole just below the shelf above. That worked out great and you can see here that the speaker wire is not visible when you're sitting in front of the unit. While I thought the center cabinets were mammoth and be able to hold all the AV equipment with no problem, in fact the 19 and a half inches was a little tight once I'd added the support beams in the back and took away an inch and a half. To make it easier to get to the equipment I installed two sliding drawers at the top level. That allowed the amplifier to be slid out so it could be wired and changed. To keep the wires from getting pinched, I created brackets at the back of the shelf to allow the wires to pass through and move with the shelf when it slides back and forth. Since wires are coming in from many directions, I also put some uh, wire guidance above. To get between the compartments, uh, you can see I just let the wires go over top. I still have some cleanup work to do and some things to mount. The original thought was that glass doors would be put over the AV compartment, but since I already had the Logitech Harmony Smart Control, I didn't need to expose any of that equipment to any remote controls. Instead, I put the remote RF connectors in, one on the AV side and one under the TV on the top, and then the base unit's its own blaster and that's in the right compartment. All that's working great. Lights were added to each of the cabinets and switches put in using limit switches. Now normally limit switches are no problem and I have lots of screws, but because these are the first inset doors I've used, I had to lower them a little bit by putting a spacer. Because the screws are so small, I didn't have any long enough, so I had to drill the holes out to one eighth of an inch. That worked great, but I did break two switches doing it, um, although it never touched the contact inside, so one eighth of an inch was a good size hole to put in it. Uh, the switches mounted fine, and I put a piece of light in each unit, and when you open the door, the lights turn on. For the accent light in the center, I originally was thinking that the lights would face outward. By testing that while I had it in the garage, I determined that facing it outward created a very dark shadow on the outer towers. Instead, I decided to face the light backwards. Currently, it's a uh, single color light. Uh, in the future, I might stick a color strip in there if I'm so inclined. Right now, I think it looks great with just one color. I also installed AC outlets on the top and over on the left to accommodate my subwoofer. Uh, in the, behind the TV of the subwoofer, I decided to use USB-enabled ports. Uh, fortunately, they're not creating any hum, and they're working out great, and I'll be able to plug in phones or other things to charge them there. To accommodate all that wire moving around inside the unit, I did have to drill some new holes in the towers. The original cabinets didn't have any wiring, so there were no holes. Uh, to get to move around within a cabinet, I simply put some wood across the opening, and that created a great wire track. In there, I have the speaker wires, the LED wires, and the power wires running off to the side. Originally, the unit was going to be freestanding, but after seeing what all that weight up high was creating in terms of motion, I decided to secure the thing to the wall. To get it flush up against the wall, the baseboard was notched. Because this is a cinder block wall, I didn't want to screw it directly to the wall and then have the thing be ripped apart if it ever settled. To accommodate that, I put a half inch piece of plywood along the wall. That was screwed in with tap cons and into the furring strips that exist in the wall. And then I installed T-nuts on the back. And then to, to attach the unit, bolts were put through the unit and attached to the T-nuts. Should the thing settle, the T-nuts will actually pivot some in their socket, accommodating uh, the motion without pulling the thing apart. To power the LEDs, a 5 amp power supply was added to the bottom. Uh, one leg has to go to the cabinets, which is always on. The other one goes up top to the motion sensor and then back down to control all of the book lights and the accent lights. You can see this motion sensor in my motion sensor review. The only note I'd make is I solved a problem I expressed in that review where this particular sensor has very large connectors. And I drilled a hole in the back and I uh, soldered wires directly onto the terminals for the connectors. 
The other thing about this motion sensor is I went ahead and used those six inch screws that I put in and it's actually suspended up there on the six inch brackets that I put along the two by fours. I had a little difficulty getting it pushed up against the wall. I had less than half of an inch for all of my wires to run uh, along the wall and into the compartment where I wanted it. Now in my house, uh, I, the house was wired with whole house speakers and all the wires for those speakers terminate behind the entertainment center. So all those had to be managed into the compartment and uh, made to look semi-decent and functional. Because I moved the towers, there was damage to the counter and the top. And ultimately, after having an avalanche in the garage, which damaged the top further, I decided to repaint the whole top. It was over 90 degrees in the summer and over 90% humidity. It was very difficult. I used a technique from uh, Paul's Toolbox. I'll put the link below, uh, which involved painting it and putting a clear coat of lacquer on. The, the, the finish looks great. Uh, unfortunately, when I painted the counter in patience and the humidity, uh, I, it bubbled and I had to scrape it all off and redo it. In an end state, very satisfied with the outcome. Perhaps one of the most interesting attributes of all is the effectiveness of the natural cooling that's going on in the AV compartment. I was highly concerned about not having enough airflow, and originally in the glass doors, I was trying to figure out how to get vents in the doors. Uh, putting the grills in to allow it to draw air off the floor and the air to flow up behind the faux panel. If you go up on top and you hold your hand over the top, you can feel a cool breeze coming out the top in the cooling vents on the tower, and there are no fans. The telescoping TV bracket works great. I originally installed it because I wanted to be able to pull the TV out and turn it towards the kitchen, which is further up the room. Uh, in fact, uh, it actually is a cool effect. I can leave, frequently leave the TV hovering over uh, almost to the front of the unit, and when you sit there and watch it, the TV screen is actually just hanging in front of you uh, and very, very attractive. I can also push it back to the wall, and it looks great there. Um, now, remember with the telescoping TV bracket, you can only get it about as close as three to four inches to the wall. I was afraid the faux wall and the color I picked was going to be a little dark, so we went ahead and added an LED light strip to the top of the TV bracket and the bottom. If you look at it, it actually illuminates the counter surface and the top. Uh, and because I didn't want to see the reflection of the LED lights all the time, I did put a little uh, half cover on that LED strip to make it uh, not as reflective against the wall. Some other videos I've done you might find useful with this type of project. I have one on motion switches, door switches, wire management, and LED lighting on drawers. Uh, so if you like this project, light up your house.